Hello everybody and welcome to English Grammar with Amir sir and uh, we will continue our discussion on the unit 1.5 9th standard the state board Kumar Bharti higher level English uh, we were we are actually done with the first part and this will be the second part of the lesson and uh, let's before before we go ahead uh, with the story let's recapitulate whatever it is that we saw in the first one uh, we saw that uh, Matilda uh, always was a girl who wanted fame, wanted riches, wanted luxury, wanted a big mansion, a palace. She was left with a mediocre life and she was never happy with what she had. There was always resentment in her heart. And uh, the story revolves around the necklace. And we had reached a point where um, Matilda's husband gave her uh, handed her the invitation at a certain function in the education ministry and then she wondered how is she ever going to go there because she doesn't have good clothes to wear she doesn't have a nice dress she doesn't have um, a single good stone that is jewelry so she was wondering and she thought maybe she would not go but then we also saw the loving nature, the caring nature, understanding nature of her husband and uh, her husband actually asked her what is it that you would you know, want, how, how much money do you want to manage a good dress and she calculated and the amount uh, she said was 400 francs. We studied that franc was the monetary unit in France and yes it, it was uh, replaced by euro in 2002. So now we will go ahead and study. We, I believe this was the last slide that we studied. We did this direct indirect speech and after that uh, we stopped because we had recorded the lecture for about an hour. So uh, we will definitely continue after or from this particular uh, slide and there will be interesting uh, assignments for you today. We will not finish the entire lesson, I am doubtful, but there will be interesting assignments. As usual, for whatever I have received from emails, thank you so much, and some of the entries on WhatsApp, thank you so much. Uh, I appreciate that the students still are in a mood to study, because all this is so un, uh, you know, unprecedented, this whole COVID-19 thing, but despite that, uh, we are somehow able to manage our studies. So appreciate and let us continue. So we were dealing with this slide and after this. Okay, this is the first slide for today and as usual when I read it, make sure that you give me your undivided attention. So let me start. She replied, I am upset that I have no jewels, not a single stone to wear. I would rather not go to the party. So here again, one more time, stone is not just some stone on the road. We are talking about a valuable gem, we are talking about a diamond or something like that. Now the thing here is, uh, I have no jewels is a question that you can expect for affirmative. I have no jewels, that means I hardly have any jewels, make affirmative. Okay. You could wear flowers, he said. Now here, she said and he said. She is Matilda and he is her husband. So he suggested that you could wear flowers. If you don't have a stone to wear, you should wear uh, some flowers, some exquisite flowers. Guys, remember, her husband is happy with his life. Matilda is not. Matilda regrets the kind of life that she, that she has. But her husband is perfectly okay and is happy with what he has. Okay, so he suggested that okay, if you don't have some jewels to wear, then you can maybe adorn yourself, beautify with uh, some flowers. You could wear some flowers. Seldom did he know that this idea is not going to, uh, you know, hold any importance in Matilda's opinion. So let's see now. You could wear flowers, he said. They are very fashionable at this time of year. So he is happy that he, she could wear flowers. Now she could wear flowers. So could here, they'll ask you to identify the modal auxiliary. I repeat, not model, but it is modal. Modal auxiliary and uh, could is the modal auxiliary of possibility. It, see guys, it shows a, a possibility, is it not? You could wear flowers as an alternative. Her husband suggested, it's a possibility that you could wear flowers. 
Now, guys, I don't think that I should give you about uh, two minutes that are usually given because there are not many things to cover. There is probably just one more entry here. They are very fashionable at this time of year. Make exclamatory. Now, you should notice that there is no article before the adjective. Fashionable is the word we are studying, but there's no uh, article before it. So we'll start with the word how. How fashionable at this time of the year they are. Often you would notice, guys, that the first two words become the last two words. They are and they are. The first two or three words become the last two or three words. Let us see if that's the end of the slide. Yes, that's the end of the slide. And so, guys, I will probably just give you a minute to do this. Okay, just one minute. It should be fine because there are not many entries. Okay, I will join you after the minute. Let's uh, get started with the countdown timer. Okay, your time is up and I have no doubt that you have made the necessary notes. Guys, one more thing, whenever you attend the lecture, it is always recommended that you have your textbook alongside because yes, you can see everything on the uh, PowerPoint presentation here, agreed, but it is much better to have it handy. Suppose you want to make any particular notification in the textbook, mark something. It's always better to have it handy. Okay, let's proceed to the next slide. We are done with this one and the next one I shall start reading now and please give me your undivided attention. Do not do anything else guys. She was not convinced. I told you that she would not be convinced. She is not the one just to settle for flowers. She regretted that she did not have any piece of jewelry. The next day she went to her friend's house and told her of her distress. Yes, here I want to make a point. Uh, look at the line here. She went to her friend's house. Now, instead of saying that she went to her friend's house, you can go ahead and say that she went to her friends the next day. She went to her friends the next day. Apostrophe S. You don't have to say house because when you say you went to the friends, that means you went to the friend's house. It's understood. So you can leave it at the apostrophe. Similarly, as you can see, the hair is all messed up here. It's because I have not been to the hairdressers in a long while. Okay, so the apostrophe yes, and you can stop there. So I don't have to say it's been a long while. Okay, I've not been to the hairdressers shop or the salon, right? So it is always okay to stop after the apostrophe. So she went to her friends. Fine, it's understood that it's friend's house. However, the lesson does not uh, do that. Lesson clearly states it. So the next day she went to her friend's house and told her of her distress. Distress is her problem. Okay, Madame Forestier, you remember M and M, M, E. M is for Monsieur, that's French and Madame is uh, for the woman. She went to her mirrored, mirrored wardrobe took out a large box, brought it back, opened it and said to Madame Loiser, Choose, my dear. First, Matilda saw some bracelets, then a pearl necklace. She tried on the jewelry in the mirror. She kept asking, you have nothing else? That's a very important question. She's just not satisfied. She's asking her friend, Madame Forestier, do you have anything else? Show me something else. Do you have something more? So she tried a bracelet. She also has tried a pearl necklace, but nothing seems to make her happy. Let's see what we have to jot down. Distress, I told you, is anxiety, sorrow or pain, suffering in short. Okay. 
Now this is the one word where I'm for uh, the explanation. I'm going to take you to the notepad. The difference between brought and bought. Difference between brought and bought. Bring the past tense is brought. The past participle is brought. For buy the past tense is bought and the past participle remains bought. A very uh, important and a very subtle difference. Sometimes the students go wrong with this. So let's go to the notepad immediately and start studying this a little in detail. So if you're talking about the verb bring, then the past tense is brought and the past participle also remains brought. If you're talking about buying something, then the past tense is bought and the past participle also remains bought. So this one means to physically carry from from what from one place to the other you can put it this way to physically just carry from one place to the other whereas buy means to purchase or get in exchange oops get in exchange oops what's up of money get in exchange of money you pay money and then you get it oh, finally i got the spelling right somehow <laughs> anyway so let's start with some good examples here buy brought brought and buy bring brought brought and buy bought bought let's uh, take a very good example so that there will be no confusion after this suppose it's june okay and now your school reopens which probably there's no likelihood, but let's say, argument say. Then you, uh, it's your English class and your teacher asks you to take out your textbooks. So if you have not carried the textbook with you, that's your, that means that your textbook is back home. Then you will tell the teacher that, sorry, ma'am, I have not brought it. I have not brought it because it's there in the house but i'm not physically carrying the copy with me next is that if your teacher says okay take out your textbooks and you haven't yet purchased because the year has just started maybe the books are not available in the market or something like that and you haven't made your purchase yet then you can say that sorry ma'am i have not bought it yet i have not bought it yet so that's a difference that you, you did not bring it in the first case and the next case is you haven't bought it yet there is a small difference i hope it is clear now let us go back to the powerpoint presentation let's see what's next choose my dear now here i want you to choose my dear i'm going to tell you that okay so choose my dear what is the correct question tag will you or won't you now, there is a discussion necessary. What happens with question tags is that normally you change it from the positive to the negative and the negative to the positive, vice versa. In case of imperative lines, however, when you want the thing done, it is better to keep the positive. Theoretically speaking, it should be won't you. But then you want the thing done, right? Then it is always better to keep it positive. I repeat, you want the things done. For example, clean your desk. If I'm saying clean your desk. Now, I want you to clean the desk. So I will say clean the desk. Clean your desk, will you? Or maybe shut up, will you? So then I want it to happen. So you will keep it will. Uh, the theoretic answer is won't you. So here in this case, I'm going to say that both of them are correct. Both of them are correct. Will you is correct because you want to keep it positive and won't you is correct theoretically because you are normally asked to change it from the positive to the negative. So here both are correct. Is there anything else? Nothing more. Uh, for this one, I'm going to give you a couple of minutes. In fact, one minute is fine. What we will do is after a minute, of this uh, these entries i'll take you to the notepad so let me start your countdown for a minute then we'll go to the notepad to write down the difference between brought and bought your time starts i'll see you uh, in a minute
okay your time is up and i'm sure that you are done with the necessary notes let's go to the notepad i told you just quickly copy this down bring brought the past participle remains brought which means to physically carry from one place to the other by past tense bought past participle remains bought this means to purchase now i wonder why i did not capitalize that okay to purchase or get in exchange of money okay i hope you are done jotting that down let's go back to our presentation and let us go to the next one again i have begun reading it so please give me your undivided attention why yes but i don't know what you like so madam forestier asked her that i do, i mean what is your choice i don't know what you like so i've just uh, offered you some bracelets and pearl necklace suddenly she discovered in a black satin box a superb diamond necklace and her heart began to beat with uncontrolled desire her hands trembled as she took it she fastened it around her neck and stood lost in ecstasy as she looked at herself boy this lesson is written so well is it not absolutely wonderful guys uh, why am i saying that look at the words here a beautiful words to study ecstasy overwhelming feeling of happiness and joy next one is tremble guys the b is silent here you shouldn't go ahead and say trembled you should say tremble i repeat you should say tremble the b is silent there tremble similarly it's climber it's not climber climber another word where such a silent b will be noticed and in india nobody cares for it is the word plumber the one who does your repair work for the faucet or your uh, drainage systems or uh, your, um, your your taps whatever connect what a connection plumber not plumber the b is silent it's plumber please remember that okay oh, those are silent b now silent b's are also funny uh, because they often come at the end you don't realize that they are silent for example comb you don't comb your hair okay bomb it's not bomber <laughs> is, is it like that it's tomb it's not tumba is it no not say it's such a bad sound is it not so all these are with silent b's one more word where you have b uh, right in the middle of the spelling and it's silent is the word debt d e b t debt another word subtle s u b t l e subtle so remember this okay here it is tremble shaking of hands shivering okay tremble so her hands trembled and why is that because she took the diamond necklace silent examples uh, two examples of silent t here we have already studied the silent b and now we want silent t uh, this silent t doesn't refer to this word it refers to fasten over here you have silent b i have already talked about it so fasten it's not fastened <laughs> the spelling here is uh, you know it it will give you the impression some kind of a word fastened but it's fasten so remember that the the t is silent there well, what are the examples of silent t so many beautiful examples t can be at the start uh, such as the word tsunami where t is silent and t is right at the start tsunami Uh, another such example with a silent t uh, will be the word listen l i s it's not at the start but anyway listen it's not listen try ever saying that <laughs> listen is listen the t is silent there are many other examples in fact i have asked you as an assignment to find more examples let's see if that's right find two examples of silent m oh the, the assignment is with the letter m how nice is that guys i want you to find two examples with silent m does it happen yes silent m now that is a good challenge and of course when you google it try to also find out the meaning never just learn the word and not knowing what it means and how to use it in a sentence what is the pronunciation learn it thoroughly 
two more examples with silent M, not with silent E, we studied that, not with silent B, we studied that as well, but with silent M. Let's check out if there is anything else to this slide. No, nothing else. Guys, a minute should be fine. Just a minute. I'll start the countdown and I'll join you in a minute. Okay, your time is up. By the way, there is another thing. When I read it, I ask you to pay undivided attention, but it isn't a bad idea if you try to read it when I read it. So now I'm going to go to the next slide and start reading it. So it won't be such a bad idea to start reading it with me. But just one word to talk more about in the last slide. What is that word I'm referring to? I'm talking about this word fastened, okay? She fastened it around her neck, around her neck means she tied it. She tied it around her neck, fastened. That's it. Let's go to the next one. Now, as I start reading it, well, you can try to do it with me. That's okay. Let's see. Then she asked anxiously, hesitating, would you lend me this? Just this? Why? Yes, of course. She threw her arms around her friend's neck rapturously, then fled with her treasure. The next day of the party, uh, the day of the party arrived. Madame Loisel was a success. She was prettier than all the other women. Elegant, gracious, smiling, and full of joy. Well, that last part is definitely climax there. How was she? She was elegant, gracious, smiling, and full of joy. I want you to pay attention at how the writer has beautifully written this. Look at the words here, okay? She asked anxiously and in a hesitating manner, she asked her friend, Madame Forestier, can you lend me this, just this? So I don't want your bracelets. I don't want your pearl necklace. I just want this particular diamond necklace. Can you lend me this, only this, and I shall be happy just with one diamond necklace the friend agreed and now look at the way the the writer has uh, expressed that she, that she expressed her happiness by throwing her arms around her friend's neck rapturously meaning very very happily okay rapturously is very very happily she fled with her treasure fled means to run away so she ran away probably she was wondering but she should not change her mind so before she changes because it's a diamond necklace so i better run off with it before she changes her mind so she fled from the scene the grammar entry you see here she was is the make a change to the positive degree she was prettier than all the other women guys remember one woman many women it doesn't become woman's. One woman, many women. Observe the sound. One woman, many women. W O M E M. Okay. And uh, what is the, the answer there for positive degree? No other woman was as pretty as she. No other woman was as pretty as she was should be in the bracket, but it's okay if you don't write it because we have already written was once. You don't want to repeat that. So no other woman was as pretty as she. That's a positive degree. The question was in the comparative, prettier than. Remember that. This um, rapturously, I was telling you about this, with great joy, feeling or showing great joy. And we have already talked about how elegant, gracious, smiling and full of joy is a great example of climax. 
but there are quite a few things to make a note of here so this slide is where i'll concede uh, you the a couple a couple of minutes so two minutes to jot down everything that's here i will uh, continue after, at the end of these two minutes enjoy the music as you make notes another 30 seconds And your time is up and I hope that you were able to jot down everything pretty comfortably. Let us proceed now to the next slide and uh, here the, before I read it there's a, a nice uh, thing to study which is about this o'clock thing guys. O'clock. What is this? Uh, we often see that we write the timing like 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock but what's this o'clock? It stands for off the clock. That's the one full form that you all must know, okay? O'clock is off the clock. And now let me start reading it. She danced wildly. When I say she, it's a pronoun for Matilda. Now remember, Matilda is very happy. She's got a good dress, courtesy her husband, very generous. She also now has a diamond necklace. So she's very happy, guys. She danced wildly with passion, forgetting everything in the triumph of her beauty and success, floating in a cloud of happiness. She's, uh, she's thrown caution to the wind and she's so extremely happy. We have studied this word, triumph is feeling of victory, guys. Matilda and her husband left at about 4 o'clock. We studied this uh, off the clock. 4 o'clock in the morning. When they were finally in the street, they could not find a cab. They walk down toward the Seine. Uh, I think Seine is uh, the name of the river in France. And I hope I'm saying it correct. Seine or Seine. Uh, well, you, you are free to correct me. It's a proper noun. Maybe they say it as Seine. I don't know. Seine is what I'm saying. It's uh, There are many French words here, by the way. The, one of them is right here. So we are going to try to pronounce that as well. All the best uh, to me. Till they found one. So they were trying to find a cab, but they could not find a cab. They were dropped off. Finally, they got a cab and they were dropped off at their door in the... Um, this one is pronounced a Rue de Martyr. That's how you pronounce it. The, uh, the uh, Rue de Martyr. Now, this is a, t the, a very tough French pronunciation. You can actually Wikipedia this guy. It's my strongest suggestion that you actually do a Wikipedia search on this. That's why I've put this photo here, a snapshot. This is a Rue de Martyr. It's a busy lane. But of course, uh, this photo is in the daytime when they were dropped off. It was about four, half past four, something like that. And sadly, it was all over for her. Guys, when they reached their uh, house, 
they uh, the lesson says that it was all over for matilda now i have a simple question we all watch the indian movies bollywood fans why do you think it was all over for matilda she had a good time she danced wildly with passion she had a nice dress she was wearing a diamond necklace why does the writer say all of a sudden that it was all over for matilda you guessed it is because now she would suddenly realize that she doesn't have the diamond necklace she's not wearing it anymore so did she drop it somewhere what exactly happened and now from this point onwards you would realize why the lesson is titled the necklace so she was very happy she got the necklace from her friend she danced wildly she thoroughly enjoyed the invitation made it count but to her horror to her horror now she is just realized or she will realize we're about to we're about to read that part that she doesn't have her necklace so did she drop it somewhere and it's a diamond necklace we're talking about for god's sake so she will be really worried about it i only wonder how worried the husband will be let's uh, see what's there to study more in this particular slide of course i've told you already that you should wikipedia this word a ru de mater should do this clause the subordinate adverb clause of time they could not find a cab will be the main clause this one is the main clause when they were finally in the street will be the subordinate adverb clause of time that's it so i am going to concede a minute for this one a minute will do it there's nothing much here to jot down i will join you in a minute time starts all right then the time is up and i'm sure that you jotted down everything the french pronunciations is a big uh, uh, key to uh, how to make the pronunciation you should probably hold a pencil or a pen something like that and then hold it and there is a video on the youtube from a french woman who teaches how to make those uh, r sound the r sound you should probably uh, do your own research and share it in the comments if you have uh, been able to do it perfectly i uh, did not make the best of the sounds i'm sure but it's a french term so all the best and let me know let me know let's proceed to the next slide students who have opted for french of course will uh, be very lucky here next one now again you can start reading uh, with me in front of the mirror she took a final look at herself in all her glory but suddenly she uttered a cry she no longer had the necklace round her neck guys you can imagine this line actually it's just a disaster she no longer had the necklace round her neck so it is just horrendous what is the matter asked her husband guys this is the second time her husband has shown some concern second time i've already uh, uh, told you this that i like the husband's character in the story here wants to do something for his wife very loving very caring so she sees he, he must have seen the look of horror on matilda's face and so her husband asked her what's the matter dear why are you so shocked what happened he he has not realized it now matilda will reveal and i am sure that even husband will be absolutely stunned like what are you saying it's a diamond necklace 
poor Matilda. She turned towards him panic stricken. Now, panic stricken is a compound word. You see the hyphen there. Okay, panic stricken. Uh, she turned towards him panic stricken. I have, I have, I no longer have Madame Forestier's necklace. Guys, you can understand the stutter. You can understand the fumbling. So she is in state of shock. And so she cannot say the line fluently with some hesitation, with some, uh, you know, horror. She says, I, I have, I have, I no longer have the necklace. Okay, Madame Forestier's necklace. He stood up distraught. There is the reaction and now even he will stutter guys remember they're not rich people So it is Obvious that they have to return the diamond necklace, right? So it is very clear why they were in a state of shock because what are you talking about? You had the diamond necklace and now you're saying you don't have it with you It is a big thing. So he stood there distraught He stood up rather he stood up distraught what? Look at this exclamation mark. What? It's more like interjection. How? Like wondering. It's a question more than exclamation. That's impossible. Exclamation, exclamation, and yet again an exclamation. You should appreciate the way this is written. What? How? That's impossible. So this is incredibly written as well. See, only by virtue of the lines, devoid of any picture, only by virtue of the lines, the writer has expressed the emotions so nicely. As a student, you should appreciate that. The writing style is so nice. Let us study what's there in this slide for us to go through. First is that panic stricken, I told you it's compound word, distraught. The meaning of distraught is very worried or upset. Obviously, the husband's worried here. What is the matter? I told you that the husband's character is quite interesting. It's the second time he has shown concern. What is the matter? If you remember, when was the first time, guys, he said, what's the matter? You remember? The first time was when he gave the invitation to Matilda. And then Matilda wasn't so happy upon looking at the invitation. That was, I, th I believe, the first time when he asked, what's the matter? And then Matilda revealed that she doesn't have a good dress to wear and so on. So this is the second time in the lesson he's showing concern as to what happened here. Why, why are you sad? Why are you shocked? Lovely character. Is there anything else? No, nothing else. So I am going to give you a minute, guys. Should a minute? Yeah, a minute is okay. So I will uh, continue in a minute. Here's your calm down. Okay, so your time is up. I'm sure you made all the notifications and let us understand the word utter before going to the next slide. Guys, the word utter is to say, she, uh, she uttered, that means she said, and she uttered a cry over here is that she almost shouted with shock because she just could not believe and even her husband could not believe. Like what? You remember how he said it? What? How? that's impossible by the way that can be a question a grammar question let us visit that slide that's impossible they'll ask you to make it negative and that's impossible how will you write it guys that is impossible you write the answer as that is not possible i repeat that is impossible that is not possible let's go quickly to the uh, notepad for this one okay it is impossible or let's say that is impossible right? that is impossible 
they will ask you to you can jot it down with me guys they will ask you to make it negative and what is the answer then that is not possible so by using the prefix im you've made it affirmative but if you have to make it negative you will use not so that is impossible that is not possible I'm sure you have made a note of that and now time to go to the next slide so let's deal with the direct indirect speech uh it, would it be wise for me to read everything first yeah let's read it first well by the way if you look at the top here it's the start of part two so the part one would like act as an interval here the part one is just ended and what an apt end for the first part because that's the point where she has realized she's lost the necklace somewhere so that's a perfect end for the first part so if you look at the top you would clearly see that it's the start of the part two let me read it they looked in the folds of her dress in the folds of a cloak in her pockets everywhere Again, appreciate the beauty, the with the the finesse with which the lesson has been written. It's amazing. Where did they look, guys? They looked again. The ter sound, not looked. Guys, it's not looked. It is looked. When you make the ter sound, it's so much better, is it not? Looked, t, looked, not looked. Okay, looked. Again, it sounds perfect. So, what did they do? They looked in the folds of her dress. in the folds of her cloak guys cloak is an overgarment okay overgarment they looked in her pockets they looked everywhere but they could not find it are you sure you still had it on when you left the hall he asked here my guju students my gujarati speaking students be very careful the word is h a l l hall not h o l e hole or w h o l e hole the word is hall hall so now the husband is like uh, really in a state of shock and is questioning are you sure you had it on when you left um where could it possibly be now they'll try to find it out are you sure you still had it on when you left the hall guys this this particular line here Are you sure you still had it on when you left the hall? Is a very good practice line for you, just to improve your fluency. Observe how I'm going to read it. Okay, ready? Let me read it. Are you sure you still had it on when you left the hall? That's fluency. If you can read such lines very fluently, that will improve the your ability to you know read and use the language fluently. Are you sure you still had it on when you left the hall? He asked. Now this is to be changed to the indirect speech. So now that we have reached this point, let's do that and then continue reading it. So he asked her if. Now, guys, when do you use if? Whenever the question can be answered in yes or no, you have to use if. What did I just say? Whenever the question can be answered in yes or no. Let's check. Can this question be answered in yes or no? Yes what's the question are you sure you had it on so it could be answered with a yes or with a no so whenever you can answer with a yes or no you should use if point noted so let's go back to the the question are you sure so yes so using if he asked her if she was sure she still had it on you will become the pronoun will change is it not she she still had it on when she had left the hall guys the simple past left will change to had a left very important to the past perfect very good statement for your study okay first you should note that whenever it is uh, a question answer and especially if it can be answered in a yes or no you are going to use the word if well some students like using uh, the word weather which is nice but not the climate weather it's a w h e t h e r weather not w e a t h e r that's point 1 so better use if as a two letter words does the work perfectly if um the other thing is the past tense changes to the past perfect i repeat if the question is in the past tense for direct indirect speech 
if the question is in the past tense it changes to the past perfect and how do you make it past perfect by using had plus v3 point noted let's continue reading it yes i touched it in the hall at the ministry so matilda is very sure matilda is very sure that she actually had she remembers touching it when she was dancing at the ministry so she had it on definitely at that stage it's only after that she lost it but if you had lost it in the street we would have heard it fall guys it's a diamond necklace more importantly if you remember the time it's four o'clock in the morning so there was silence around so if uh, it would have fallen on the street the husband claimed that um, we would have seen it or rather Matilda claims that uh, we would have heard it it must be in the cab final conclusion it must be in the cab remember we took a cab so maybe as you were alighting or maybe getting into it you would have you must have dropped it and it must be in the cab are there any more entries no that's just the one entry there i want uh, to concede just a minute for this is that okay yes just a minute we will restart in a minute enjoy the music guys And your time is up. I have no doubt that you have made the required no, uh, notes. Let's proceed to the next one. The word stunned means extremely shocked. Just keep that in your mind. Okay. Yes, that's probably it. So they both agree now. Matilda as well as her husband, they both agree that it must have fallen in the cab. That's probably it. Did you take his number? So do you have the number of the cab? No. They stared at each other. That's what do you mean by stare? Look without blinking the eyes. They both looked at each other like they both were sure that that's in the cab. Now, unfortunately, we don't have the number. So this is a big situation at hand. Okay. Uh, we will come to this grammar question. Let me just finish the paragraph. At last, Loisa put his clothes on again. That's Mr. Of course. I am going back, he said. Over the whole route, now guys, for my Guju students, the Gujarati students, this word is whole, the mispronunciation, okay? That one, H A W -L, L is whole, this one is whole. So the whole route, we walk and see if I can find it. He left. Now the interrogative, make interrogative with the question here. I'm expecting this, it's a very important question, you can mark that as important. He left. The answer is, didn't he leave? Didn't he leave? Guys, when I say didn't, notice that the second D is not silent, okay? You shouldn't make the pronunciation as didn't. It's wrong. Don't say didn't. It's didn't. Again, what did I just say? I said it's not didn't. The second D is not silent. It's didn't. The second D has the sound. Didn't. So he left. Didn't he leave? That's the lie. Anything else? Yes, she remained in her ball dress all night. So in her uh, dancing dress, okay. And uh, her night, uh, that night, her mind was completely blank. She did not know what to do. Her husband returned at about seven o'clock. If you remember, what is what was o'clock, guys? You remember we studied this, guys. O'clock is off the clock. I'm sure you were able to say that. O'clock is off the clock. He had found nothing. Make affirmative. He had barely found anything. That means he had not found anything. He had found nothing. He had barely found anything. 
guys uh, I believe this is it yes so even for this slide a minute should be fine I will join you in a minute enjoy the music Okay, your time is up. I'm sure you've made all the notifications and mark that he left question is important. Just two words, he left. What an interesting question. Didn't he leave? Observe that the word left changed to this word leave. Very important guys. Left. So because you used didn't, it changed to leave. Something to note. Next one. I'll read it first and then go through the notifications. He went to the police. Of course, it's a diamond necklace, is it not? So they went to the police. To the newspapers to offer a reward to the cab companies everywhere. The tiniest glimmer of hope led them. So they, they went wherever there was even the slightest glimmer of hope. By glimmer meaning shine faintly. Some hope, some shine, some sparkle where they, you know, by virtue of which they could get the necklace back. She waited all day in despair at this frightful disaster. How was the disaster? It was a very frightful disaster. Loisel returned in the evening. It's Lo Loisel, by the way. The correct pr French pronunciation is Lo Loisel. A imagine the spelling was L-W-A, but you can say it as Loisel. Okay, there are two uh, different acceptable pronunciations. He uh, returned in the evening, a hollow pale figure, guys you remember pale, loose color on the face, he had found nothing, guys for the second time you'll have this, last slide we studied this, you must write to your friend, so finally the husband said, we are done trying to search it all over, I think you should write to your friend, what's the name of the friend guys, let's quickly test it, you remember, quickly guys, yes. Madame Forestier. So her husband is saying now it is time that you write to her. Be honest. Tell her. But by the way, there could be a trick. Just tell her that you know the necklace is uh, there is a fault in the necklace, and so you will repair it, and then you will give it back to her, so that it will give us some time either to find a necklace or maybe arrange a replacement. Well, they'll surely have to replace it. It's a diamond necklace, so. The husband has suggested now that Matilda should write to her uh, friend. Now let's carry forward now. Take the lesson forward. You must write to your friend. Tell her you have broken the clasp of her necklace and that you are having it mended. Now mended means repair. I told you that. Just tell her that there is some fault with it so that we can have enough time at hand to make up a story. And. Uh, Remember that if we do get it back, then we can give it as if nothing happened. But in case we don't get it, then we will definitely have to consider replacing it. It will give us some time to look for uh, it, okay, to, to look some more. That is either search in the cabs, uh, ask people, wait for the police to find it or something like that. Is there anything else there? Nothing else there. Guys, over here I'm not going to give you a minute or something. You can just pause the video for now if you want to make the uh, notes for the meanings. That's it. But I'm not going to wait because there's nothing much to write. Let us go to the next slide straight away. This lesson is getting interesting now. <clears throat> she wrote as he dictated. But well, this is interesting. I will tell you why. This word dictated reminds me that on our channel we have uh, beautiful spell check videos. So those who have not checked them out, 
try that okay a beautiful spell check videos there are two of them three of them maybe three spell check one spell check two spell check three so uh, talking of dictation there are 10 words in every video i believe there are 10 so there are 30 words for you and interesting very tricky words so all those who have uh, not yet watched those videos on our channel just go to english grammar with amaya sir and you can type spell check we'll have spell check one two and three and honestly do it and let me know your score okay the word dictate dictation remind me reminded me of that so she wrote as he dictated at the end of one week they had lost all hope that's it guys at the end of a week they had lost all hope they tried to find it but unfortunately it was all in vain they could not find it and uh, loisel who suddenly looked aged declared we must consider how to replace the jewel so they now have to consider what do they have to consider how to replace the jewel because it's a diamond necklace of course we can't just get away by telling her that we lost it so we will have to arrange uh, you'll, we will have to replace it so we will have to buy a new one you should consider that now and so they went from jeweler to jeweler looking for a necklace like the other one consulting their memories guys what's the meaning of consulting their memories it means that they were trying to recollect how it exactly looked because the design should be the same and you know what the women are very particular about their jewelry so they tried their best to find a necklace that was exactly like the one matilda was wearing because madame forestier will definitely look at it properly so they did not want to take that risk and you all know the girls the women they, they are very particular about their belongings the guys nah, not so much but they are very particular the observation is just immaculate so all the girls salute to you the way you observe amazing so they were uh, you know going from visiting one jeweler to going to the other one to get the exact design the one that looked very similar or probably the exact copy of the one that matilda was wearing you can imagine now they must be really uh, unhappy with what has happened you know? both were uh, you know sick with grief and anguish dictated i told you already watch the spell check videos i believe the spell check one then there is spell check two and finally you'll have spell check three and please let me know your score guys do it very honestly and please share your score i would like to um, you know know about your score there next one oh sorry oops beg your pardon grief is intense sorrow and anguish is probably a very nice word for you to learn you could use it in the writing skills it means severe mental or physical suffering anguish as you remember uh, this, this word i believe i used it in some letter but i don't think i shared it on the channel it's one of those uh, lectures that i took some not on our channel but anguish is a very good word nonetheless for you to master it means severe mental or physical suffering and again, I believe that I'm not going to stop here. We will go to the next one straight away. Remember what I said about the spell check video. And the next one, guys, the next slide, we will treat that next slide as the last slide for this lecture. And then we will continue uh, with the, the next uh, part, let's say on Monday. Today being Saturday, you know, I upload videos uh, every Monday and Saturday. So the next slide is the last slide for this lecture. Let's see, what do we have now for the climax for today's lecture? Oh, small one, small paragraph. In a shop at the Palais Royal, Palais Royal. Guys, it's better not to say the S here, it's kind of silent. It is silent, remember, it's French, Palais Royal or Palais Royal. They found a string of diamonds which seemed to be exactly what they were looking for. So finally, the husband and wife managed to find something that looked exactly like the necklace that they wanted. So finally, they have what they want. Uh, but now just, I don't think we have the cost here. Do we have the cost here? Or maybe we'll have to wait for it till Monday. No, we have the cost here. Guys, whooping. Look at that. 
it was worth 40,000 francs. They could have it for 36,000. So remember they did some negotiation and uh, the uh, they could have the necklace then finally they negotiated and they could have it for 36,000. Guys remember, please understand the situation here that Matilda is not a rich woman. The, her husband had saved 400 francs for uh, his hunting gun I believe for her he, he gave that for the dress and here we are talking about 40,000 francs and negotiations were done but still 36,000 francs so please try to understand that they are in a very tough situation here but they have to replace it because it was a diamond necklace let's see if there is something to make a note of here I don't think so it was a very simple one however yes there's one thing this Palais Royal is with a silent S guys again you can Wikipedia this will have an image in Wikipedia about the Palais Royal and it's about the silent S so here is a good assignment for you I am going to give you in my notepad I'm going to take you to the notepad and I am going to share two words with silent S well we have done a lot of silent letter uh, letters today we saw silent B we saw silent T there was homework probably for the silent M and now here there is a silent S silent s i'm going to give you two examples and your homework is to give me two more just two more with a silent s let me take you to the notepad immediately here we are and i'm going to provide you with two examples of silent s i repeat silent s the first one is debris the word is debris guys it's not debris debris i'm sure you've heard of this debris is the uh, the concrete cement or the other construction waste that's called debris you can look it up okay it's not debris it's debris what's the next one let me take you to the notepad again and uh, the second word that i would share with you is um, this one chassis the chassis of the car it's not chassis it's chassis chassis of the car and now going back to you please make a note of this okay debris and chassis okay. uh, pause the video if you want but now going back to our lesson this is palais royal okay palais royal you can wikipedia this will have the image of that particular place there in france is there anything else no nothing well the next one is what we'll study in the next lecture guys as usual i have thoroughly enjoyed bringing uh, these video lectures to you for a change instead of meeting in person because of this uh, COVID-19 everybody is at home but at least the study has not stopped I'm very happy and I also am proud of the students who are regularly studying and sending me their entries wonderful 9th standard we will continue on Monday up until that time please take care stay home we will meet soon